Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, I was on YouTube and I saw two different videos from photographers talking about a new open source photo editing application called Rapid Raw. Now, overall, both of those photographers gave it really good reviews, so I was kind of curious to see what Rapid Raw was all about. And in today's video, I'm going to share it with you. Before I begin, I do have a favor to ask. Years ago, when I started my YouTube channel, I used to always start off by asking people to subscribe to my channel and to click on that little bell so that they get notifications when I post new videos. I haven't done that in years, and my channel really hasn't grown much in years. So if you could, if you find my content interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that little bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos. Now, Rapid Raw, from what I understand, uh, there was a, or there is a person who was kind of dissatisfied with Lightroom, thought it was too heavyweight and it was bogging down his computer. So he decided to create his own photo ep uh, editing application and he did so in two weeks. And that's how Rapid Raw was born. And he put it out in the world as open source. And those of you not familiar with open source, it means it's free. You could download it and you could try it out for yourself. There's no limitation on the software at all. Also, if you're into programming, you could download the source code as well and tinker with it. Now, I'm not into any of that, but in the description below this video, I'll have a link to the website so that you could download it for yourself. And I do want to show you something on their website very quickly. I just want to touch on the application first. Uh, this is Rapid Raw, as you could see, and I'm going to open it up uh, full screen. And you can see that I already started a session, so it has continue session here. When you first open it, of course, that won't have that, and it will just have this option here to find a folder of images. Now, before I do that, I want to go to settings. That's this little gear icon. And you'll notice that you have different themes you could choose from uh, preview resolutions for the images themselves. But what I want to point out here is this integration, this comfy UI address. Enter the address and port of your running comfy UI instance required for generative AI features. This application does have generative AI built into it uh, where I I haven't used it because I'll get to that in a moment, but apparently you could create things. You could like similar to what you could do, I guess, in Photoshop, but you need this comfy UI integration. And if I go to their website and this is the website, again, I'll have this linked in the description below this video. And I scroll down a little bit. Uh, we'll get down to this part about this comfy UI thing. Um, overall, where is it? Here it is, the foundation, the generative integration. Uh, this comfy UI backend, uh, you need to manually set it up. I don't know how to do that. I don't want to learn how to do that. So I didn't do that at all. So uh, as far as the program for me, I don't have those generative AI features. I'll show you where they are. They're not a big part of the application, but I just want to mention that. So if you are interested in it, go to this webpage, read more about this comfy UI backend that you have to manually set up and you could do it. Now, when you do go to this website, it may be kind of confusing uh, to find where the download is. What you need to do to go to the download is right over here where it says releases, click on latest. And then when you do that, you'll have the download page. And I downloaded the first one right at the top. It's just a compressed uh, version of the application itself. So you just uncompress it, then put the actual executable file, the .app, if you have a Mac or .exe, if you have a Windows computer, put it in with your other applications. Once you do that, on a Mac at least, you're going to have to go to Terminal and copy and paste this into Terminal and hit Enter because it won't run unless you do this. You just have to do it one time, and once you do that, it will now run all the time. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go back to the application itself. So you can go through settings. You can see there's keyboard shortcuts and everything. And then once you're done, you could go to the folder to find a folder. And that's what I, I'll do here. And on my desktop, once all my hard drives spin up because I let my computer be idle for a while, I have a test gallery. So I'll open this up. These are just some images I 
cobbled together so I could test out the application. And you can see that I have three folders in test gallery. If I go to Erie Base Marina, here are the images. This is the library view. It says right at the top. And at least uh, so far in the development of this application, there is no way that you could resize any of these thumbnails or anything like that. Uh, but you can click on them. You could go down here and give it a star rating. Uh, you could click here and copy settings if you did already edit one. So copy the settings from one and then paste the settings to another one. So you can save some time in your editing workflow with copy and paste. But let's just say I want to edit this image. I could just double click on it and it will open it up into the edit panel. That's what I'm calling it. I'm not sure what it's officially called. And you'll see all the tools over here on the right hand side. And there's everything here you'd expect. There's a basic tab. There's a curves tab. There's color. And inside of color you have white balance and color mixer. And then below that you have details. There's sharpening and noise reduction. And then below that we have effects. And here we have presence vignette and grain and then over on the right hand side you have some other tools you have a crop tool below that you have masking and i'll show an example of masking a little later in this video and then we have presets there are no presets uh, with it you'd create your own and then they'd show up here and then here are the generative uh, ai features that i mentioned about and you can see it says right at the top that that comfy ui backend is not detected because i didn't set it up but uh, with the generative ai features you could uh, replace an area select the subject you could shift the style i guess i don't know you could upscale it uh, that and then here are export options so let's go back to edit and let's just do a quick edit and i'll show you how well it edits an image we'll go to basic and you know obviously on this image the shadows are dark so i'll open up the shadows and you can see it's doing a fairly good job of opening shadows bringing highlights at least now in the development of the application there is no facility for you to um, get a white and black point like you can in other applications. For example, in Lightroom, you could hold in the Alt Option key to help you get a white and black point, or you could tap the J key in Lightroom and other applications, which will give you clipping indicators. None of that is available so far in this app, so you have to just kind of eyeball it. And then we'll go down, and I'll do everything here, even though typically I guess I wouldn't do curves maybe, but it is a point curve, and you can see that you have the RGB curve, then you have the individual red, green, and blue uh, curves as well. Uh, we'll add a little contrast, I guess. Put a slight S curve in this. And then we'll go to color, and you can see that the color temperature can make it warmer or cooler. To reset a slider, you could just click the reset circle here, or just double click right on the slider itself, and it resets it. Um, vibrance and saturation, let's add some saturation. We have a color mixer, let's say I want to darken the sky, click on the blue little swatch. I'll add some saturation and pull luminance down. All right, so it works pretty well. <clears throat> then we'll go to details. Uh, we have sharpness. Um, I haven't really seen a big difference with uh, sharpening. You, know, you got to like kind of let it. You can see it's kind of blurry. The preview is brief, blurry, so it's hard to tell. This image isn't blurry like that. It's just the way the app is so far. So it's not in its development phase yet, where it um, where it. Uh, kind of scales properly to give you a sharp image when you zoom in so you're kind of on your own with sharpening uh, luminance noise reduction color noise reduction and then below that we have the effects uh, now this is where i think it needs more work for example if i want to add clarity to this image and i move this to the right you see how it's affecting the tone it's almost like a brightness control uh, dehaze just kind of makes it darker Move it to left, it kind of add, seems to be adding haze, but I think that needs work as well. Structure, same thing. It's making it brighter. So I think all three of these sliders need a lot of work. Uh, vignette uh, works as you would expect. So I can put a vignette. And grain, I really never really messed with grain. So let's see what that does. It's kind of hard to tell. I don't see much. Yeah, I see it kicking in. There's grain. So we'll reset all that. 
All right. So that's all the controls. Now I mentioned that there's other features over here. There's of course the crop tool. You could open up the crop tool and you could just grab a handle and crop. Try to grab a handle. There we go. And crop. You do have some aspect ratio kind of presets, the original ratio, free form, one to one, so on. So you could do its typical crop crop tool. Nothing out of the ordinary there. But let's go to a different image so I could try to show you some of the masking capabilities, which are okay, but I, I think they need some more work as well. Uh, so let's go like to this image. And before we even do any masking, let's just do a quick edit on it. So we'll go to basic. Um, it's a little dark. Make it a little brighter. Open up the shadows a little bit. Bring the highlights down a little bit. It's kind of hard to get the white point right, but we'll do our best. Maybe add a little contrast in there. Uh, let's go to color, and we'll add some saturation. Not that much saturation. Let's go to yellow. Increase saturation to yellow and make it brighter. Uh, let's go to green. Increase saturation green and make that darker. Kind of add some tonal variance in the grass. Those of you that watch my videos know I often do that. All right, let's just say that that's good for now. Let's go to masking. Let's say I want to do something to the actual sculpture. So we'll go to the masking um, icon here. And you can see our options are subject, foreground, a brush, a linear gradient, a radial gradient, and color is grayed out. I'm not sure why color is grayed out. I guess it's, oh, I hover over it. It says coming soon. So let's do the subject. It doesn't have AI or anything, so it doesn't find the subject. Now, I'm not sure if I did set up that back end, that comfy UI thing, if it would do this. I don't think so. I think that is solely for this um, part of the application where I could select the subject here. So I think here, this you're kind of totally on your own. So what you need to do here is once you have this um, option, the subject mask set up, you'll notice you have this little plus sign. What you do here is you just draw around the subject. So you can see I'm drawing around the subject. Come down here, cross here. And close it off like that let go. Then you'll see that it's analyzing it. It said very quickly and it, it has a mask. Now it's showing a rectangle around the actual sculpture, but it actually did find it. If I go to exposure and pull it up, you'll see how it found the uh, sculpture pretty well. I mean, there are some parts that are missing, but overall it looks pretty good. <clears throat> so let's say we add some contrast. We open up the shadows a little more, even though I added contrast. But I don't see a lot going on. Like, again, if I go to the details with sharpness, uh, well, I do here now. It seems to be making it brighter. But in the in the uh, global sharpening, I didn't see a lot. But here we are. In effects, uh, clarity, you can see how it makes it brighter. Dehaze kind of makes it darker. Structure make it brighter again. So I think those sliders still need some work. But overall, you can see it did a pretty good job. Um, so then we'll go back to editing, it gets, gets rid of that rectangle, and then I could go down to effects and I could give it a darker vignette. So I, I got an edit. Now you notice that it, it, the masking wasn't very good, and there's no way that I saw, at least at this point in its development, to modify the mask because you could see that if I zoom in, like it missed a lot in here, in here, in here, and it doesn't look right. So... Um, in my opinion, although, like I mentioned, it's getting kind of glowing reviews online. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the editing engine is good, but it's, it's still like, you know, only been out. I mean, the guy developed it in two weeks and put it out there. So I don't, not sure how long it's been out since, but I don't think it's been out more than a few months. So it, it still needs some work. It still needs some refinement. Um, it's not something that I think is ready for use for most people yet, but it's something that you probably want to keep an eye on if you're kind of tired of paying monthly fees to Adobe. This might be an alternative for you down the line once they improve it, once they better integrate the AI features in it and um, add some other uh, features that um, we often use. Now, I mentioned that you could copy and paste. So if I copy these settings and then I go to another image, say this image, 
I could paste this settings here. And you can see that it did this weird thing here with the clouds. And the settings really aren't copied properly either. If I go to this image that I edited, I have, I do have highlights down. Yeah, I guess. And I go here. Now they're not the same. Well, they are the same. It took a while from click in, I guess. But it looks so much different. So I have to make it a lot brighter. But you can see this weird effect it's getting up here in the clouds. I'm not sure what's going on there. It doesn't copy the mask. So, obviously, as I mentioned, it's going to need some more work. Uh, but it is something, as I mentioned, that you could keep your eye on because it seems to be going along in the way we want an application to work. At least many people want an application to work. Uh, lightweight, fast. Not a lot of like bells and whistles that you'll never use that just weigh down the application. So I, I think it has a lot going for it. So again, in the description of this video, I'll have a link to that website so you can check it out. Um, if you know anything more about it, because like I said, I just stumbled across it like yesterday I saw those videos. So I haven't been playing with it that much. There's probably a lot more to it than I'm uh, communicating here. So if you know more about it, Mention it in the comments and let everyone know. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.